snoozing away in the leaves, dreaming about all of the bugs that you can eat hiding down in there. Oh, you guys. Pancake's doing fine. Last time the inspector gave us a report that Pancake was starving. And he's not, but he does need better meal quality. And since we've done a little bit of research on the pangolins, we should actually be able to improve their meal quality to level 3 meals, which should make them super happy. Oh, and what's this? Okay, we have a visiting player. Dada has low welfare because Dada needs to get into the pool area. Oh my gosh, Dada, wait! Dada, you've grown up! Oh, look at his spunkiness, you guys! And he's running past the cherry blossom trees where his parents first decided that they would become mates. Oh, I love this. Oh, Dada! Oh, my heart. Okay, guys, it's time to get serious. We need Dada to be able to have a mate of his own, and that is not going to happen if we are not able to get more conservation points. So, although we have everything kind of happening all over the place, it is very much heck in a handbasket. We do need to increase our zoo reputation too. We are going to finally get more exhibits in. I just need to make this happen so that eventually we'll fix the problems we create. We will add more decorations and get the, the guest facilities actually functional at some point. But we're going to at least begin by getting some exhibits down. We can always fix them and improve them in the future. We'll just keep telling ourselves that and I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, the concrete doesn't really want to bend for some reason. Let's see. Curve, okay. Uh, there we go. So this is actually going to be where we are going to put the Japanese macaques. And I'm not really, I don't really off the, I believe it or not, I don't really know off the top of my head a lot about Japanese macaques. So I'm not sure like what they're like. I'm not sure how the space they need. Yeah, so we'll try to give them a goodly sized space with some variables to it so that people can maybe come around on multiple sides get some different views of them and it can be a fairly large size exhibit we might be able to even make like a bridge path over it as well so that people can see them from the top because i really do like the bridge paths i think they're very useful so that would be good and we can maybe come in here and swap out like some of this whoa i didn't know i could just pick up the whole wall and move it like that Pardon? That was kind of awesome. I kind of want to do it again. Like, make this whole thing a little bit closer. Can I really do that? Like, nice! Man! Everything I can think of for customizing this place. That would be so much easier to just expand the size of some exhibits. Wouldn't it? Like, I'm, I'm kind of like, hmm, maybe I should have made this a little bit nicer. What if I go ahead and scooch it here? Wow! Wow, that's a really cool little feature so that we can make enough room for all of our animals. All right, well, let's come in. For now, we'll add some glass on this side and we'll just make it one way. I'm pretty sure that macaques can like climb and jump. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this at least five and a half meters. It might need to be more. We'll find out. Let's put in a good strong habitat gate right over here so that the zookeepers can come on in and also before i forget let's come in and do our work zones where is my work zone i'm trying to remember facilities mechanic hmm zoo overview oh i don't have any ad marketing what am i doing not doing oh my gosh there's just so much to do and also people aren't coming now that the tickets are like $12. Let's make it 10 and 4 and then people will probably start coming more often. I'm currently researching for things. Where did staff that research facilities, animals, finances, staff work zones over here. Okay. And we want to edit the pangolin point work zone. Oh, oh, my mechanic was never assigned to these. Oh, I am such a goose bucket. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, those work zones. 
they bit me in the rump again. You guys were probably yelling at me about that the whole time and it just kept going over my head. Okay, let's come in. We're gonna get more pathing in here if I can. All right, malformed path point. My foot. What if you just put the path point? Woohoo! All right. All right. I think eventually you figure out the weird how do you do's. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I say as I literally destroy the path. Oh my gosh. Forgive me, friends. I really didn't mean to do that. Uh, this is Siri tries to learn to path 101 and should probably do a little bit of research before she just starts deleting things under your feet. Very sorry. Very sorry. Oh, geez. I just deleted people. Okay. That's fine. I'm sure that that wasn't a critically important group of people who would eventually give me money anyway. We'll work on this. In fact, because this kind of depresses me a little, let's come and remove this part of the barrier. <laughs> and we can pretend I meant to do this. Totally meant to do this. Okay, that's terrible. There we go. That's why, because it wasn't curving. Ugh. Ugh. Eventually. You can only begin at the beginning, friends. You can only begin at the beginning. But the good news is, this is all we really needed to get freaking started on adding in more animals over here. Let's put down some Domitian spots. One over there. And then another one over here. And we're going to start taking better care of our guest. We're not really making... Okay, we have protesters for some reason. Because of Anne. Anne! Anne, sweetie... And, and, all right, look, I put a cooler down again, Anne. She's so stubborn sometimes. We know that she's fine. Oh, and the vet research is going. Thank goodness. Oh, we fully researched the Chinese pangolin. Yes, Miss Rose. I'm going to have you on a new thing soon. We're going to have vet Celeste go ahead and get more pangolin points, like do more research on our pangolins uh, so that hopefully, ooh, the barrier really needs fixed on here. Holy flamingo flock. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now we have another flamingo who's like, I'm ready to grow up. I'm so excited. This is so cool. And at least some, if we keep breeding really healthy, happy flamingos, then eventually we will be able to send them out for conservation points too. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and come into animal storage. And we have been sitting on top of these macaques for way too long. So we're going to go ahead and move the macaques in here. There's one. And then our female, Jobin and Hutaru. All right, and our female. Here's the other. I don't know anything about Japanese macaques, actually, other than I think that they love snow and they love bathing in snow. So we might eventually move this whole habitat back because this is not exactly where I wanted that habitat, but maybe we can make it kind of into a snowy mountain thing. <gasps> oh, you're so small. I thought you were going to be so much bigger, but you're actually so small and you're adorable. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at them. Oh my gosh, Joven. Welcome. Welcome. We're just going to wait until we have a new... Hi, Joven. Can I go ahead and just name you... Let's see. I kind of want to name him Sokka. Okay, I'm going to name him Sokka. Holy. Did you see him, like, zip by? All right, here comes the female. Oh, look at her. And Hotaru, Susaka and Hotaru. Okay, so let's get this place suitable for them. So what do we need to do? All right, first things first, their habitat needs some fixing up. So their terrain, they need some hard shelter. They need a lot less long grass. They would be a thousand percent happy with rocks and they would be really happy with snow. So you know what that means? Let's go ahead and let's get them some little mountain like things in here. Yeah, there we go. 
So, whoops. There. Look at them kind of like Macaque Mountain. That would make me start feeling really good about having them right next to our pandas. And then I'm going to do the usual. I just really think that having like an enclosed den in a little cave is just my favorite thing to offer them for hard shelter now because it just looks fantastic. They seem to react to it really, really well. Uh, we're gonna get some extra large bedding in here. Some large bedding, there. Look at how you could just like make an insta cave. That's so nice. And now they can just, oh, that doesn't that look cozy to keep them like out of the heat? Oh, that looks so cozy. All right, and so what else do they really like? They love having snow. Oh, that's gonna be fun. And they wanna have a lot of land area. They need a bunch of climbing area, which is really cool, climbable areas to be able to climb up. I've never really had that before. So let's get the snow in here. The animal needs more snow. We're gonna get snow and rock. So they can basically have like infinite rock. So let's just make this, whoa. <laughs> I've never tried doing it like that before. There we go. We made an entire Rocky Mountain. Look at this. That's really cool. That was so instant. Much easier than doing it in little patches. And speaking of things in patches though, look at this. Now remember, if we want the snow to stay, we have to keep this place cool enough. So we need to put down some coolers or else the snow is actually going to melt. So I don't know how if the snow will actually stay here unless I cool it off. So we definitely wanna work on that. So then we're gonna to need to get the, oh, did the snow melt? The snow melted! <laughs> okay, so we need to make sure that they are inside of the electricity zone, they are. And then we need to go ahead and get the coolers put in all throughout their habitat because otherwise the snow is going to just constantly melt and that should cover most of their habitat actually. And they won't have any way to enjoy having snow for their terrain. So that would be non-ideal. And then they are from Asia, they have temperate and taiga plants. So we're gonna go ahead and give them some temperate and taiga plants and they need to have climbing things, which means I need to start having some of my mechanics research the climbing the climbing blueprints that we have so that hopefully we can take very good care of them. But I would love to see, I kind of want to give them the cacks like a little shrine that they could have in their, their exhibit. That would be kind of cute to put a little shrine in their exhibit and let them climb on it. That's a thought. We'll keep it kind of naturalistic for just a second. All right, Taiga and Temperate, let's do this. In Asia, there we go. All right, what do we have? What do we have? <gasps> Look at these large trees. Ooh, the elm trees. Oh, that would give them something to climb on, all right. That would definitely be a good climbing tree for sure. Uh, let's see, dwarf cornels. Really pretty, wow, those are pretty. We have little elm trees that they could climb, which would be very good for them. Ooh, little holly trees. Those are really cute. Oh, hello little holly trees. So we've got holly trees, ivy patches, Japanese maples. Uh, ooh, a jungle walkway. <gasps> We're so putting this down. This is one of the blueprints I got. We're so putting this down, if I can, in another part of my zoo one day. Not here. All right. Nettle. We have these beautiful sycamores. We also have the twin flowers again and the wisteria clusters, which would be very pretty. So I think we're going to go ahead and put down... There's also cypress trees, which seem really suiting for once it starts getting... Oh, there's tiny cypress trees. And the large trees are very pretty. And you can put down fountain bamboo as well. So I think I want... Let's do a giant elm tree over here. And they're already like super happy. So I think that they're content with that. Let's put another one over here. And then a couple of the small ones. So one here. And then let's put another one like right here. And I wonder, does that count for their climbable terrain? I'm not sure, climbable area, maybe rocks? 
like do rocks count as something that are climbable? And we could put down some tiger rocks and they could just kind of like climb on them? Maybe? Rock cladding, cladding. That's temperate rocks, temperate rocks, tiger rocks. Um, I mean, it would be kind of fun to build like a little, a little rockway thing, but what do we have for them to be able to climb on? I wonder, oh, look at the gardening. I could really get into the gardening. That would definitely be something I could spend a long time playing with, is just making little garden patches. But we should probably make sure this place gets cold first. All right, so they have enough plants technically to suit them. We need to wait until it gets cold enough to put down the snow. And let's figure out what Japanese macaques need. For blueprints, what do I have? For, hmm, prefab, do I have anything? Climb. Oh, there's the lemur climbing. Large animal climbing. Oh, that's actually really good. These will this will probably be good for the macaques. That looks really cute right over there too. Is that good? Small animal climbing. Here. That that was specifically made for lemurs, so oh that's cute. There's a whole bunch of little outposts that I could put down. I actually think the one for lemurs fits perfectly there. So we're going to try that out and see if they use it or not. My guess is they should. So hopefully that'll count. And then let's make sure we get anything that has to do with Japanese macaques in here. And then we will actually check out how big their... Ooh, forge box, forge box. We already have a forge box for them. Sweet. We're going to put that right at the entrance. Oh, the snow's the heck. Yes. Maybe we have hope. Maybe we have hope after all. I need to flatten this to surface. Why does it make it grassy? I don't know why it makes it grassy. We'll fix that. But I want to get the forge box down here first. All right, there we go. So we'll put the forge box in. <gasps> Block of frozen fruit. That sounds amazing. Oh my gosh, we're going to get that down here for them to enjoy a couple blocks of frozen fruit. And then they already have the bedding down. Oh, look at all the toys they could have. I wonder how much enrichment they need. We're gonna find out, aren't we? We are gonna find out and we'll go ahead and put this down here so that they can have a couple fun spots to climb and jump on. All right, terrain. Let's go ahead and get it more rocky in here. There we go. Then a bit of snow up there. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that plays out. Oh sweet, they're so happy! Look at that, like instantly hard shelter, terrain, climbable areas are approved of. Oh good, good, good. Enrichment, species toy enrichment, so they just need more toys. And then they're completely happy! Yes! All right, but what about social? Oh, too few adults and juveniles in the animal social group. All right, let's see. Zoopedia, oh look at how beautiful they are. What say you about their social group? Social needs. Japanese macaques are extremely social animals, living in groups that include up to 100 individuals. They are primarily made up of related females and their offspring, but also include smaller numbers of unrelated males that females have accepted into their group. What? <laughs> One of these males will be alpha and several will be beta males. The species is matrilineal, so the females in the group are dominant and have very close bonds with each other. Matri matriar matriarchal groups with a single alpha male is their structure of dominance and they can have up to 50. <laughs> Miss Rose, we need to start doing research on the Japanese macaque and that clearly means that we need more macaque females. This is, this is sending us extremely clear signals that this is simply not enough macaques. So, oh my gosh, <gasps> they're climbing, they're climbing. I don't wanna miss that. So we're gonna go ahead and pause for just a second because I really wanna see the Japanese macaque too. How many macaques? Give me more, give me more. I'm gonna buy them both. Cause, oh, this guy might get a little stickly, but you know what? I mean, we can only live once. We can only live once. All right, and let's get these guys in here. So can I move both of you at the same time? No. We're gonna go ahead and put him in here. And then we'll go ahead and get her in here. Yasuo and Haidio are gonna come and join the group. 
and maybe that will help. And then we'll give it a minute and we'll see if any more are available for adoption. <gasps> Look at our little master climbing up to poop up top. That sounds like a wild animal, all right. Oh, look at him! And he can see the difference between jumping from here to there. That is so cool. Oh, that makes me so happy. They need a little bit more toy enrichment. And they seem to really like climbing up here. So maybe we'll like put a cardboard box somewhere down here. What do they think about that? Oh, they still need more enrichment. Well, maybe a small ball. There! Now they're gonna be happy. And we have more! Yes! More macaques! Oh, this is fantastic! Yay! Another one of the males. Oh, this we're gonna learn so much about them. Look, Miss Rose is already here to do her job. She's so good. Oh, my workload is heavy today. She has new animals to learn about. Miss Rose, are you feeling okay? I wanna make sure she's being like paid enough. She is capable. Let's train her up again. Because she is very capable and Miss Rose has been learning so much about all of the animals for so long. So we're going to take good care of her. Look, and people are here. They've got pandas on one side, Japanese macaques on the other. What more could you guys ask for? Hmm? Let's see. A drink. They're really thirsty. <laughs> I can't blame them. <laughs> and it's so dark down here. They can't see anything. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. It is a slow but steady progress, but now we have some Japanese macaques, so I'm feeling pretty optimistic about at least there's been a little bit of an improvement to our establishment. Thank you very much. We're even getting a few little paths, a few little light paths put down so people will be able to see the animals just a teensy bit better and see themselves a little bit better. It won't be quite so dark all the time. They don't need to despair. We can put like a tree with some lanterns right over here to be thematic. And we will make this place beautiful. We will. But most importantly, we will also come over and spend time with the animals that are near and dear to our heart. Our flamingo flock. The Sakura flamingo flock. We will continue to watch Dada love climbing just like his dad, Didi, which I love. And we will get Dada a mate. That is, that is, Dada needs, like, his own, Dada needs mama, I suppose we could call her. And look at all the flamingos bedding down for the night in the pandas caves. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. The pandas have to push their way through the flamingos to find somewhere to sleep at night. Oh, we're getting there. Chaotic. Amazing. But we're getting there. So... Oh, and the vet research is already complete. Is that Miss Rose? Miss Rose, you are so on top of it. Ah, oh, so all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. This is just turning out to be so freaking delightful. I don't even know where the macaques have gone. I think they're all in their little cave to go ahead and sleep tonight. They are, maybe? No, they're not in here. Oh, maybe we could hang some lant- Can I put lanterns in here so I can see what they're up to even at night? Oh my gosh, I can. <gasps> okay, hang on. I think I have to give it like a flip, a little flip, but I can. <laughs> I can actually go ahead and just put down some like lanterns and hang them in the cave so that now I can check in on my macaques when it's too dark to see. I love this. I absolutely, on all levels of my heart, love this. And I love that now we have these little guys who have been added into our world. And they're just the beginning. All right, so we're gonna, oh, and the animals are starving. Huh, not good. Come eat, little one, come eat. We're getting a lot of flamingos. It might be time, it might be time to go ahead. Oh, hello. Hello, Chell. But it might be time to, to uh, oh, jeez. Look at all of them feed. They're all so hungry. Do I have enough krill? We might want to start thinning the flock by sending some of them to the wild. Holy cow. Holy flamingos. Hi, buddy. How are you? 
<laughs> but all right guys thank you so much for joining me if you could do please leave a like for our fantastic flock of flamingos try saying that five times fast and if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures do please consider subscribing but most importantly my friends stay curious and i'll see you next time Bye bye